was for redemption, paying the price for our sins. His precious blood, it was for communion. God wanted closeness again. All of our chains were broken on the day that He rose. Celebrate the day that He rose. There's power in the day that He rose. Bless His holy name. He rose. Yeah. This is a true story. It transcends every language, nation, and tongue. Our existence, our faith, 
is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. In days of old, people's faith earned them a good reputation. They stood above the crowd, and by faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back from the dead, but others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Others braved abuse and whips and, yes, chains and dungeons. We have stories of those who were stoned, sawed in two, and murdered in cold blood. They went around in animal skins, poor, persecuted, and mistreated. The world didn't deserve them making their way as best they could on the cruel edges of the world, all of them pleased God because of their faith. But still, they died without being given what had been promised. God had a better plan for us, that their faith and our faith would come together to make one completed whole, their lives of faith not complete apart from ours. And all of this for a name that is higher and greater than any other name. Just one touch, 
and he was made whole and, and my heart was made whole. You who have touched so many and asked nothing in return, you heal our hearts. And now we've broken yours. and you did it! It's like a lamb to the slaughter. How dare you look on me with love? I ripped your body apart. I tortured you. Most men can't survive what I did to you. But you did. Jesus, I have so many questions. You're the only one who can answer them. It's forever taken that I 
Surely, this man was the Son of God. Take him down. Take him down. Our fall. 
thought of you above all he saw value in you in me before we ever even got here he said you're worth it despite what we think about ourselves Jesus sees us all as valuable he didn't just die for the people back then at that time he died for you and I today in this time of history with our brokenness, our sins, our shame, our guilt, our condemnation. But why did he have to die? Hundreds of years before Jesus stepped foot on the earth, there was a system in place. It all began the night before the Israelites left Egypt. This was during the times of Moses and Pharaoh. Way before Jesus got here, God told Moses to lead these Israelites out of Egypt. The night before they would leave, an angel of death would come through the land of Egypt, killing every firstborn that was there in that area, except those who had blood on their doorpost. It couldn't be just any blood. It had to be the blood of a spotless male lamb. And God told Moses, tell every Hebrew family, every Israelite, to kill a spotless male lamb, take the blood and sprinkle it on the sides of the doorpost and on the top. Dripping down, it would form a cross. When the angel of death came through the land, it would pass over every house that had the blood on the door. We remember that time as the Passover. Every year, the Israelites would remember the Passover, celebrate when God delivered them out of the hands of Pharaoh, out of Egypt, remember how he spared their lives, that Passover also was a time where they would take a lamb and they would kill that male lamb. It had to be a spotless lamb. And they would take the blood and pour it down on the altar. And it would be an atonement, a sacrifice for their sins. Because their sins required a payment, a payment in blood. But God knew this system wouldn't work long term. He knew a different type of blood would have to come. A blood that would override what the animal sacrifices could not do for eternity. And so he sent his one and only son, the blood of Jesus Christ, the spotless lamb of God. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent Jesus because he loved you, not to condemn us, but to save us from condemnation, to save us from what we deserve. The truth is all of us have sinned, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. But Jesus came to pay the price. And what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago, he doesn't have to repeat every year. He did it once and for all for you and for me. Jesus paid our debts. We are forgiven. We have grace. Thank you, Jesus. He came for the wealthy and the poor, those who had it all together and those who knew they were a mess. But not everybody could see it. The religious people, they were angry. This Jesus had stirred such a ruckus in their area. They, they hated him. They wanted to kill him. They weren't the ones that put Jesus on the cross. He himself laid his life down for us. Jesus touched so many people, impacted their lives, healed so many people before this moment. And usually in these productions, we would show this moment towards the end. But we wanted you to know the whole reason why Jesus lived was going to the cross. That was his mission. He had it in his mind. Even before he recruited any disciples, I must go to the cross. This is why he came. But who did he impact along the way? And what does that mean to you and I? Their lives, their stories. 
The Bible says there were miracles, so many miracles that Jesus did that there wasn't even room to write them down in all the books. Jesus touched so many people we don't even know about. Impacting families in the Roman Empire, impacting families that were among the Gentiles, the non-Jews, and then, of course, his own people of Israel. What if we could go back the week before Jesus died? If we could rewind from what the moment that we just watched and see those seven days before Jesus went to the cross, who did he impact? How did it change them? Where did it leave them? At the foot of the cross and outside this tomb, broken in tears, wondering what would become of this man as the stone covered where Jesus was laid. So let's go back the week before Jesus died. <laughs> Wrong again, little man. Want another shot? Yeah. Focus this time. Which hand? Left. Really? Right? No, no. Left. Right. <laughs> <sighs> what is this? Sir. I was explaining to the boy the non-military application of focus and uh, attention to detail. She tends to the children, not you. <coughs> yes, sir. Philo, go. Yes, father. Whoops. Oh, oh, I got you. I got oh, watch you. your step. I got you. Okay. We're just having some fun with the boy. He already asks to go out with you every day beyond the walls. And the more you entertain him, the more you make him feel like he can be one of you. And look at him. He won't be. Sir, Don't crush a child with games, soldier. With respect. It is your duty to defend the Roman Empire, not fret over my son. Sir. Now come. I have an assignment for you of a more sensitive nature. There is a Jew from Nazareth stirring up trouble among the more traditional Pharisees. I want you to be on alert for trouble and stop it before it can be started. Sounds like fun. I knew it would brighten your day. You man on me. Mama, can I go outside the walls today? Not today, Philo. Why? The soldiers took you yesterday. So, they can take me again. I said no. We have to stay within our bounds. I hate this crutch. Oh, we all hate our crutches, Philo, in whatever form they take. <laughs> but mine's here. It's this piece of wood. It holds me back, Miriam. I'll never be more than this crutch. There's a man I've heard of who could make you more. His name is Jesus. There are stories. One day a blind man was sitting outside the gates of Jericho when Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Lord, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Philo, immediately that man received his sight and began to follow Jesus. It was incredible. Mary, is this Jesus? Is he a sorcerer? You know, I'm not sure, Philo, but I can tell you that that man was only one of many people Jesus has healed. Don't fill his head with stories. I know he can heal you. So. That one was not a story. My sister saw it with her own eyes. Stories give him false hope. But Claudia, that's just it. There is no false hope with this man. There's nothing false at all. Enough. No, Mom, can I please try? Please, I have to. Philo, I don't no, want to... I mean, at le if he's not a sorcerer, at least I'll have gotten to go outside the walls again. Where do we find this Jesus? for the ladies. 
scarves for the ladies, right from the ships of Lydia, taken from those far away places. You want to buy? Beautiful, beautiful. No, yeah, you, ah, scarves. Where's your daddy? Does he have money? Hey, little girl, do you like, do you like? Tell your daddy, beautiful, feel the qu quality. Ah, beautiful scarves, beautiful scarves. Do you have any money? Make a deal. I'm feeling generous today. How much? What? Not that generous. But perhaps my assistant could help you with a scarf uh, more suitable to blowing the nose. Ah! Beautiful scarves for beautiful <laughs> ladies. No, thank you. We are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Have you seen him? <laughs> you and everyone else here, my girl. What? Are you wanting to walk on the water, too? <laughs> what do you mean, uh, walk on the water? Uh, you don't know? Well, uh, I suppose a little information might be in order. After he, Jesus, had fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish, he sent his disciples out ahead of him across the lake to Capernaum. It was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. And the wind was blowing, and the waters were rough. There you have it, a ghost, no, a man, a man who walks on the water and commands the winds to obey, and the water's calm. You must have heard the story incorrectly. That's absurd. No ordinary man can walk on the water. No, you're right about that. But now then, he is no ordinary man. Is he? <laughs> where is he? He was Philo? right here with us. Oh, Philo, Philo, where are you? Philo? Philo? Oh. Where are Philo? you, Philo? It's here. Oh, goodness. Philo? So many people. Jesus. Philo? Philo? Hi. Uh, I'm sorry. The master is tired. No more today. But it's the children. They want to see Jesus. Well, I'm sorry. Poor children. Peter, he wants to see the children. He knows he's what? Oh. Yes. Peter, let them come to me. <sighs> wait, wait. Hey, uh, he, he, he wants to see them. Go ahead. Thank you so much. <laughs> come on, children. I want to tell you a secret. My father's kingdom is made up of people just like you. Like me? <laughs> yes, just like you. <laughs> and like you, of course. Like each and every one of you. Thank you so much for bringing them to me. I'll see you guys later.
sit with me. <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't I want to talk with a friend? Well, it's just that my f- most great men don't have time for children. Every great man was once a child. And they were closer to my kingdom then than they are right now. Sit. Okay. This is a well-made crutch. You make it yourself? No, it was it was a gift. It's just a feather crutch. No, I disagree. And I am a carpenter, so I might know a thing or two about it. Do you want to use this crutch for the rest of your life? No. I hate this crutch. Well, then do you believe that you can be healed? Yes, I do. So the crowd was managed? There wasn't really much to manage. Kind of disappointing, actually. Good. Who is this man, this Jesus? A carpenter from Nazareth, but his influence is growing. He seems to inspire complete devotion from those who follow him. He says his kingdom is coming, but it's a kingdom that's not of this world, and it belongs to children. (laughs) So you don't think he's dangerous? I didn't say that, sir. Something about this man troubles me. Well, regardless what it is, it disturbs a delicate peace. And the Pharisees won't go for a man drawing so many and of all kinds. And the stories they're telling. Apparently, he is a healer. (laughs) Jews will believe anything. Yes. The sick are healthy. The lame walk. The dead rise. It's the kind of thing that could get a man killed. Which is what I do best. Father, Father, look, Father, I've been healed. (laughs) What is this? Explain this to me. I can barely explain it myself. The man, Father, he placed his hands on... What man? Jesus, sir. You allowed this? Uh, Pontius. There were so many children, Father, all around, and the men... They told the children to go away. But he said, let the little children come to me. I did. He placed his hands on my leg, Father. It can't be. And I was healed. Father, I can run. We can go anywhere together now. Outside the walls. And Father, I can be a soldier. Enough of this. Take him to his room. Father. Take him. What? You took him out? The boy wants to see the sun now and then. And to that man, a Jewish troublemaker. It's rare to see my son excited or happy about anything. I didn't see the harm. And are you forgetting the fact that he is healed? He is drawing too much attention, the wrong kind of attention, as it is with Philo. As what is? He's your son, And I love him. Yes, but you're also deeply ashamed of him hiding him away. I was never hiding him away yelling at the soldiers when they play games with him or make him smile his imperfections frightened you and you drove him away but this man I don't want to hear about that man. man embraced our son this man held open his arms and asked him to approach and look what's happened he's healed he's healed Pontius Hey! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> I have something difficult but important to say to you. One of you will betray me. What? what? Lord, we would never. Is it me? Lord, who? No. It is the one who shares the sauce with me. Judas. 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 He is the one. No. Judas. Why? I must die as was prophesied. But woe be to the man by whom I am betrayed. Far better for that one if he had never been born. You are my friends. And there is no greater love than a man who would lay down his life for his friends. I love you. Love you too, Jesus. I am only with you a bit longer. And where I'm going, you cannot come. Lord, whatever harm Judas has brought against you, I swear we will stand with you. Yes! yes! Peter, it is you that Satan desires to take from me, to sift his wheat, but I, I have prayed for you. Impossible, Lord. I am ready to go to prison for you, to die for you. The yes. truth is that before the rooster crows at dawn, you will have denied me three times. Never. I would die for you. Lord, we will protect you. Yes. 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 Lord. Enough. With all of my heart, I want to have this Passover meal with you before I go suffer. I won't be having it again until everything in my Father's kingdom has been made complete. This is my body, broken and given for you. And this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood, which is poured out to forgive the sins of this world. Drink. Remember me. Remember, when the world hates you, that it only hated me first. There is no servant which is greater than his master. And if they persecuted me, then guess what? You are next. And all the greater reason do they have to come after you. But do not be afraid. Never be afraid. I will send a helper to you, and he will reveal to you the truth about God and all things. Before I go, I have a new commandment for you. One last, and it is to love. Love one another. Even as I have loved you, you must also love one another. It is only by this, by love, that the world will know you were my disciples. The hour is near. Will you pray with me? Yes, yes. In the garden. Yes, yes. It's blasphemy, I tell you. With disdain, he ridicules our law. He mocks this very priesthood. It's not us you have to convince. It's the people. They adore him. And why not? He heals the sick. Exactly. Raises the dead. He's much more than a prophet. I tell you, he's a devil. Yes. Healing them by witchcraft. Ah, but the people believe he's the deliverer, the Messiah, ah. the coming king. And now, he's here in Jerusalem. People are talking as if he would overthrow Rome. And after what he did in the temple, I don't doubt he will try 
Well, it's over with tonight. Now, where is he? He's coming. I I'm sure of it. Is he still expecting the money? Uh, don't worry. I have it. Yeah. Uh, You're late. I, I came as soon as I could get away. Well? After the meal, they're going to a garden. I'll take you to him then. And do they suspect anything? No, no. <laughs> Good. We will be waiting. The money! 30 pieces, just as you requested. Now, go do your bidding. <laughs> yes. Take from me this cup. Nevertheless, nevertheless, it is not my will, but yours be done. Get up. Wake up. My betrayer has arrived. Betray me with a kiss. Arrest him! Oh, no. Arrest no. no! 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 Jesus! No! No one, you've done nothing wrong! They can't do this! Peter, let's go! No! How could I have let this happen? No Peter, it's not your fault. This is all Judas's fault. But I should have known! I gave him my word, my promise to protect him. How did I not see this coming? Just go, John, go. I want to be alone. Listen. I know you admire this man, but he's causing a lot of trouble and the empire can't simply just turn its back. You are a pilot. Our family name, our reputation cannot be tainted by your interactions with this Jew. Philo, you are my son. Do you understand what that means? Do you understand what that means? Being my father, that man, he is a good man. In fact, he's more than that. You are a son of Rome, and we do not bow to their Jewish carpenters or their gods. We bow to the will of Rome. Philo, this your life, your name, your reign. This is everything that you are. This is all that matters. Remember that, son. If he comes before you, Claudia, you have to... stay out of but, this. But, but if he does, he you will. Need to... They have worked the people into a frenzy over him, and they are handing him over to me. You cannot condemn this man. 
I've had dreams, Pontius. You cannot be a party to this. Save him. S save him? How am I supposed to save him? With your power, Father. You're a powerful man. I am only powerful within the walls in which I am given, and they have stacked the decks against him. Father, you know this is wrong. It's not that simple. It's an injustice. Whether it is or not, I cannot stand against the tides just to save the life of one man. As he did? As he does even now? As he did when he healed Philo? This conversation is over. Father, the miracles are real. Philo? No, I am a walking miracle of Jesus. There is no denying that. He heals and offers hope. He offers salvation. And if you let them harm I him- I cannot let them do anything. I will never forgive you, Father. You understand that. Do you think you can fight the world when the world is so much stronger than you? He defies Rome. He defies Caesar. And those mistakes are unforgivable. He will come before me, a hated man, and all the good... The good is who he is. The good will be forgotten. No. Every person from every walk of life will know his name. I wish I could take his name. His name stands for something good. Something of hope. Something of healing. You are a pilot! No, Father. I'm his. I want his name, not yours. They'll send him before me, and the crowds will be monstrous. When we went to see Jesus, Philo was lost in the crowd. I couldn't find him. And then, suddenly, through all the multitudes, sprang Philo into my arms. Philo, without any sickness in him, no withered foot. Our son leaped, and walked, and danced, all sound. His feet were as lovely as his face. Philo, our son, made whole. I wish I could have been there. He made our son whole. Do what you can. It is your own people who handed you over. Are you a king of the Jews? I am no Jew. Well, what do you say? The only reason I came into this world was to give witness to the truth. Anyone who searches for truth desires truth, longs for truth, they know my name. What is truth? Do you know I have the power to release you or have you crucified? You have no authority over me except for that which comes from above. It is customary that I release a prisoner during your Passover. I will let the crowd decide, Barabbas or 
Lord Jesus. The murderer? Yes. The murderer or the king? Whom would you have me pardon? Barabbas the murderer or Jesus, king of the Jews? But what do I do with the Christ? Why? For what crime? The people have spoken. I can find no fault with this man. I wash my hands of his blood. No, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you were. This man was with Jesus. He's one of the disciples. No, 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 you're mistaken. I've never seen the man. You You've got to be one of them. Your accent gives you away. Oh, wait. You were with no! I swear I don't know the man. words to give you, and neither will Philo. Very well. I have no words to give him. They will come. Believe it. Make sure those shackles are tight. Move! No, Marcus, no! Get him out of here! No! Get, no! Get him out! No! 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 Marcus, you can't! Jesus! I want this inscription put above the cross. That way every man from every tribe and every tongue will know his name. And not just know it. I want them to believe it.
king of the Jews, written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. Pilate wanted to make sure every person that walked by that cross could read what it read. King of the Jews. Hebrew was the language of the slaves, the language of the Jews. Latin was the language of those who had wealth, had power, influence. Greek, those who were philosophical, intelligent, a great education. Jesus died for every person. He died for all types of people. No matter who you are, no matter what family you grew up in, no matter how much you have, if you don't have Jesus, your life is empty. Pilate had everything he wanted, and yet his soul still had a void, a hole. He was searching for truth, searching for answers to what life was all about. He knew this was an innocent man, but he was torn by what the crowd wanted him to do. Think about Barabbas. This man was dirty. He was a sinner. He had done everything to deserve a death on a cross. And Jesus took his place. I'm Barabbas. You're Barabbas. We all are Barabbas. We all deserved the death that Jesus died, but he took it for us. Every time those whips hit his back, it was for your sickness, your broken marriage, your cancer, your disease, your broken relationship with your son, with your father, with your mother. Jesus didn't just die so that we could tell a good story and have a symbol that outlasts any other symbol in the history of the world. He died so you could have healing in your family, healing in your body, healing in your marriage, restoration in your life, and that you would be made whole. This is why Jesus came. But you can't receive it until you accept and admit that you need Jesus. Our pride holds us back from what Jesus did for us. He asks everyone to come to the cross, young or old, rich or poor. Whatever nation you're from, there is room at the cross. These disciples, they, they were discouraged, defeated Peter. He felt like he had failed God. He had three chances to prove that he would never deny Jesus. And every single time he struck out, Peter felt like the biggest failure of them all. All the disciples ran, but Peter, even if he heard the words, I forgive you, he would deal with the self-hatred every time he looked in the mirror, hating what he saw, carrying the bitterness towards himself for his own sins. I don't know about you, but there's moments where I can relate with Peter. Moments where I could relate with each of these characters. Needing Jesus, needing his forgiveness, needing his healing, his hope, his joy, his peace. But these disciples, they were convinced after this moment that this ministry that Jesus started had come to an end. Everything they had worked for, all of it, was over. They watched the stone roll over the tomb. And they were hiding in the upper room, wondering when the soldiers would come to get them and kill them too. Pilate's family, convinced this was the end. This was all that would happen about this man, Jesus. But Jesus had a different plan. The disciples had forgotten Jesus knew what was going to happen. He had planned this all along. In fact, the tomb was really just the beginning. You've been out. Still not talking to me. Son, it's been three days. Philo, you should be more careful walking alone. Not lame anymore, Father. I can manage. It's not that. The man that healed what you has... What about him? That man, Father? That man had no fault. He claimed to be the Messiah. He was the Messiah. 
Who is anyone to say otherwise? The Pharisees? The Pharisees say otherwise? Philo, they forced my hand. Nobody forces your hand, Father. Did you know they beat him? They kicked him and hit him and whipped him over and over again. And then they laughed. I saw it, all of it, with my own eyes. Just as I seen my healed leg, the leg that that man healed. That man was... Was what? The Messiah, the Son of God. The life you gave, your body was broken, your love poured out. You bled and you died for me there on the cross. You breathed your last as you were crucified. You gave it all for me. Hallelujah, you are the Savior. Hallelujah, you are the friend. Hallelujah, you King forever. We thank you for the cross. darkness lifelessly the frame of the father's son in agony he watched his only son be sacrificed he gave it all for me hallelujah you are the savior King forever. We thank you for the cross. Lord of your life have you surrendered your heart to him your past your present your future the truth is Jesus is alive and he's coming back again he is coming back soon 
all the signs are pointing to it. We can see it in the heavens and we can see it across the earth. Jesus is coming back. You must be ready. Maybe you knew Jesus at one time. Maybe you followed God, but you walked away. You've gotten into your own sins, addictions, habits that you know you're not living for Jesus. But tonight, you can repent and be forgiven. His grace is great enough to capture you and pull you back to where you need to be. But it starts with you acknowledging, I need Jesus. I need his forgiveness. Maybe you've never known God. And you're here tonight, you're ready to put your faith in Jesus all over this room with every head bowed, every eye closed on the count of three. If you say, that's me, tonight's my night. Don't wait for another moment. Don't wait for tomorrow. You're not promised what will happen tomorrow. This is the time for salvation. Right now is the time for repentance to receive his mercy and grace. If that's you on the count of three, you just slip your hand up all over the room. One, two, three. Hands going up all over over the room you're saying I need Jesus I'm ready to repent I'm ready to receive his forgiveness his salvation I want the cross I'm ready to turn my life over to him from this day forward never looking back I have decided to follow Jesus keep your hand out all over the room unashamed unembarrassed unafraid all in front of your family your friends this is your moment your day to never be the same again we see your hands all the way in the back, all the way here in the front, on side to side. Secondly, you're here tonight and you say, you know, I, I know Jesus. I believe in Jesus. But Paul, my life is hurting. Maybe you got a doctor's report. Maybe your marriage is on the rocks. Maybe there's a broken relationship in your family. You need the healing power of Jesus. It could be sickness in your body or sickness in your heart. You know, one of the greatest miracles Jesus does is putting a broken heart back together. I'm going to ask those of you right now that lifted your hands or those of you that say, I need the healing power of Jesus in my body, in my marriage, in my life. I'm going to ask you to make a bold step. The Bible says when we acknowledge Jesus before men here on earth, he acknowledges us before his Father in heaven that day that we step into eternity. If you'll make that decision to boldly, not just lift your hand, but step out from your seat, join me here at this altar. Come and stand right by Jesus. Step out from your row. We'll wait until every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every husband, every wife, every grandfather, come on, they're coming, you're coming. Tonight is your night. No matter how rich you are, how poor you are, Jesus died for you. He saw value in you when nobody else did. He saw mercy for you when no one else would forgive you. Jesus paid the ultimate price for you. No matter how good you are, how bad you are, Jesus loves you. Come on, let's cheer them on. There are hundreds of people coming to the altar right now. All over the room. All over. We're going to wait till they keep coming. I promise we'll dismiss you in just a few minutes, but wait for this moment. It's the most beautiful, powerful moment. If you thought the resurrection was pretty, this is awesome to see people come to Jesus. This is why he rose from the dead, to meet you, to touch your life, to heal your body, to set you free from that addiction, to heal your marriage, to touch your family, to save your daughter, your son, your mom, your father. Jesus loves you. He loves you. He loves you. I'm going to ask all of us to pray this prayer that those down here at this altar are getting ready to pray. And if you want that, you can keep coming. Boys and girls, if you're ready to receive Jesus in your heart, don't miss this moment. Come on down to the altar. Here's a few boys coming down here right now. The Bible says when one sinner repents, angels throw a party in heaven. I see about 100 coming down here today receiving repentance, forgiveness, mercy, salvation, healing, grace, a fresh start. Jesus loves you. He loves you, girls. He loves you. He loves you. Let's all pray this prayer together right now. Say this with me. Down here at this altar, mean this with all your heart. Say, Jesus, I repent of doing things my way. I receive your forgiveness. 
I put my faith in you, my Savior, my healer, and I receive it today. Your salvation, your healing power, your grace. I'll never be the same from this day forward. I'm all yours. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, Jesus. What an amazing Easter Sunday right here. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for staying through that moment. You are dismissed. God bless you. Happy Resurrection Sunday. This is going to be your best week yet in Jesus' name. Don't forget next weekend is water.